Joining us now uh, is uh, Kapil Kaul, CEO and Director at Kappa South Asia. He's joining us from Delhi. Kapil, good afternoon. Thanks for uh, joining us here today. Uh, you know, my first question to you is just this. Everyone was assuming that Indigo would have some role to play in this entire divestment process. They've thrown up their hands saying that, no, we're not interested. Uh, so it sort of throws a spanner in the wheels just as the process was getting started. Well, um, uh, to, to most who are tracking Air India, this might have been a disappointment. But Indigo's interest was always about the international operations. And once the expression of interest clearly specified that there will be an integrated network that will be an offer, um, to, to some extent, I'm not surprised that Indigo has, has backed out of this transaction. We've been saying when Indigo made that unilateral offer to the government that they will acquire without knowing the details. From that day, we maintained that acquiring Air India, a very complex uh, operation uh, with significant challenges, both in terms of people, product, systems, and culture. Uh, for Indigo to integrate while they are executing a, a, you know, a business case of about 60 to 65 aircraft a year uh, would be very, very risky. So I'm happy that it, uh, the decision to withdraw uh, has been taken. It's, it's in their interest of the shareholders. And I think uh, it will be a long-term strategic strength to, uh, to, uh, to Indigo not to pursue something as, as, as dangerous as, or as, as complex as Air India is in terms of acquiring. So in, in a nutshell, I can say that it may not be, it, whilst it may, it's, Air India is still a very good opportunity, but for Indigo, uh, I don't think Air, Air India was meant for Indigo, and I'm glad that they have taken the decision not to pursue this opportunity. Uh, now, so given the fact that Indigo has opted out of this bidding process, then who are, who are the other players who might be interested to buy stake in uh, Air India? I don't think, um, uh, you know, the in Air India's divestment is only limited to Indigo's interest. We still believe that the uh, uh, Air India's divestment will attract um, significant and diverse interest. Uh, from the other Indian carriers, I think, Two, uh, two, for two carriers, it makes a strategic sense. Jet Airways and Vistara. Um, uh, for Vistara, it may be a Tata Singapore vehicle, and for Jet, uh, I expect them to bid. So you would still see possibly two, two Indian carriers, if not three, uh, bidding for it after Indigo's exit. And I think there would be one or two other suitors as well. Uh, for a, a business, airlines which are into this business, I think this is a great opportunity. Uh, for something, somebody like Tata Singapore, you could overnight create on the Singapore Airlines. Um, but it, as I said, it was not meant for Indigo. It makes sense for Jet. It makes a tremendous sense for Vistara. And you may find different suitors uh, with different combinations. So I would expect that the interest will continue to be significant and diverse. Uh, so as you rightly said, Jet and Vistara might be interested, but because uh, they also might be interested because Vistara does not have a domestic presence, neither does Jet has. So they, they can still uh, acquire Air India and I increase their presence do uh, in the domestic market, also in the international market. But do you think would it make sense for an international player to buy Air India? No, international player will be a part of a consortium. So I, I don't see any Indian company, uh, though I, we may be surprised, but would be bidding without an international partner. It is possible they may bid uh, alone um, without a partner initially, and later on they may, they may get a partner. But, but I still believe that Bistara and, and, and Jet and Plus, there will be few more who will be interested. Uh, I think the, ex uh, the expression of interest is, is well structured. It's more or less in line with what the investors have, would have wanted. Obviously, there are issues with respect to little excessive debt and the staff retrenchment courts. We'll see how the RFP, uh, what will be the content in terms of staff retrenchment in the, in, in the RFP. But overall, I think the expression of interest is well balanced, given that the government had to factor in and balance multiple stakeholders. Uh, I think that that EOI will, will get some uh, interest and significant interest. Uh, Kapil, you don't think the government's continued role in it will throw off, uh, you know, uh, perhaps at least the foreign investor uh, community in the sense that if you're doing a consortium and you need funding coming in from uh, somebody outside of, say, the jet management or the jet uh, current shareholders or the Tata Singapore current shareholders, the government, the Indian government interest will not throw them off? Well, I think uh, we would have ex expected and liked a 100% divestment, a uh, clean slate exit. But if the government chooses to retain some equity investment with two objectives, one, they will uh, want the uh, existing employees or 
or the employees that could potentially get retrenched uh, are given um, an upside uh, in, in the listing. And like as it's happened in other transactions, uh, the future upside that uh, that there would be if, if the uh, airline is acquired in the right hands, that in the next few years that the postal listing, that the government would like to realize some upside. So from that perspective, it is positive. But I must say that um, uh, one would have liked a clean, a clean state uh, slate uh, divestment. But 76% is the next best option. And yes, I would expect the government to assure the investors that 24% means a financial being a financial investor and they'll stay away and their interest is not to interfere. And one has been hearing that one of the government companies like an LIC may, uh, may bid for that stake. Uh, so the government will have to assure them that uh, we would not interfere. Uh, but if the government's intention is not to interfere and whilst ensuring that there will be a future upside both for employees and for the taxpayer, I think that's not, not a negative thing. But yes, if, if we, they can't assure the investors of the interference, then I think it may, it may reflect in the interest uh, in terms of people who will participate. But I think the overall, both from a labor perspective and from a government interference, interference perspective, I think the government would make sure that they would give the flexibility as for labor is concerned and not intervene even if they hold 24%. You don't think they'll have to go back and revisit, I mean, uh, you know, going by your earlier comments that there will be enough interest even under the current structure. So they won't have to revisit either the 24% that they intend to retain or the fact that they're clubbing everything together and selling it. Because I guess if they hadn't, Indigo would have been an uh, interested party. No, I think this transaction can't go through if they have to uh, have domestic and international separately. We'll have to effectively... Uh, created Air India and Indian Airlines what was before the merger. That, uh, that exercise is time consuming, can't happen by December deadline uh, and can't happen soon. So I, I don't think that possibilities, uh, that possibility of, of having only international network on offer, that's not, that's not feasible. That can't be done in the short frame of time and that would mean almost breaking Indian Airlines, uh, Air India into an Indian Airlines and Air India. So I don't see that feasible and I don't think uh, whilst it may not suit uh, Indigo, but to get a diverse set of interest uh, and particularly from airlines who have a limited domestic um, network or airlines or consortiums who are not in the aviation business now or wanting to uh, invest in Air India. Without a domestic, there can't be any international because domestic feeds international and international feeds domestic. So I think the government's decision to offer an integrated network is, is, is something that is, is the right decision. And, and, and obviously, if they would have broken uh, domestic and international separately, it would have suited Air India, but would not have meant uh, anything significant for taxpayer and, and, and the government. Uh, sir, do you think the comp bidding will be less competitive now as, the in as Indigo has opted out and government might fetch a lower value for Air India? Well, valuation would depend upon who is acquiring and who is extremely interested to, to acquire Air India. I continue to believe that Air India, with the right management, with the right board, with some significant recapitalization and restructuring, is, 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 is a very valuable asset. Um, so from for depending upon who is acquiring, though given the fact that um, it, it may look attractive to acquire on paper, ultimately you have to turn around and, and restructure it. There are performance issues, there are culture issues, the system issues, um, because Air India is, is operates in a, at a different level. Um, so there is significant risk uh, in, in terms of even turning around Air India for whoever acquires it. So from that perspective, you will expect rational bids. I don't see anybody going over the top. So you will see rational bids, but you will see significant interest. All right, Kapil, thanks so much. Always uh, good to get your thoughts on this process. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to speak with us. That's Kapil Call of Kappa.